Hi everyone, this is Dan with Forex Boat Trading Academy. Happy to be with you today. Today's tutorial is going to cover the best Forex indicators and how to apply them. And as we progress through today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at different indicators, but we wanted to start with uh, kind of a funny beginning actually that also holds some value, which is uh, basically how traders many times these days are approaching the market, which is uh, quite risky actually, given how volatile the market is right now. And what we see here in this cartoon is three traders in a room. Uh, the one trader is looking out the window and comments that snow is falling. And upon hearing that, his two trader friends immediately start yelling, sell, 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 sell snow, sell, sell. So it's a bit of a joke here, but this joke actually uh, is pretty relevant to what's happening in the market right now for many traders, which is uh, because the market's moving in a volatile fashion, we're seeing more than ever uh, traders, what we call chasing the market or chasing the price. And this is really something that today's tutorial will help traders prevent themselves from doing. Okay, using technical indicators the proper way and having you know, a top five technical indicator list will help avoid this type of trading behavior. And so when we talk about how to apply the best Forex indicators in the market, this is really the first key point, which will be extremely valuable to you moving forward. This will save you hundreds, if not thousands of pips moving forward. Uh, if you properly use indicators and are, uh, you know, set rules around using indicators, then you really, your days of chasing the market should be over. Okay, so today we're going to cover some trend following indicators that are really powerful in today's markets, some oscillating indicators. And in doing that, we're going to cover the top five technical indicators that I see in the market right now for today's, for today's trading. Uh, and so let's jump straight into the charts. Okay, on my MetaTrader 4 platform here, Okay, I currently have a fresh chart of Euro US dollar loaded here, the four hour chart. And we're going to start by looking at trending indicators. Now, most indicators uh, you can access through the navigator window here on MetaTrader 4, you can see the option for indicators. So I'm going to expand that by clicking the plus sign uh, next to indicators. And you can see all of these different indicator folders open up for me. So we're going to get into that in just a second. The first indicator, though, actually, that I wanted to pull up is accessible from the toolbar, okay, which uh, is the Fibonacci retracement indicator. Now, to get there, you just click insert at the top on the insert menu, scroll down to Fibonacci, and select retracement. Left click. And now my cursor has changed into kind of this bullseye with uh, vertical, excuse me, horizontal lines next to it. And this tells me that the chart is prepared for me to draw a trend line, uh, which will then show me when I'm finished uh, the, the Fibonacci retracement levels that are relevant to that particular trend line. So what I'm identifying here is this most recent trend on the four hour chart in Euro dollar from this low point here, you can see, okay, roughly around May 25th, 26th, up to this high point here okay, around uh, on June 10th. Okay, now what I'm going to do to draw this trend line on the chart is I'm going to go to the, the bottom point, the lowest point here, I'm going to left click, and then I'm going to drag diagonally upward to the high point on the chart, which is that June 10th high point that we mentioned. Once I get to that high point and I'm happy with the line, I'm going to let go of my cursor and you can see the Fibonacci retracement levels drawn here. Now, if you're seeing these for the first time, I'll explain. So within this trend from this low point to this high point, what Fibonacci is telling me is levels where upon a pullback or a retracement, so those are two words for really the same thing, pullback or retracement, uh, these are levels where, in this case, Euro, US dollar can find support, okay? Now, what I'll say from the top, because it's the most important point with Fibonacci, on a short-term chart like four hour or one hour, the 38.2% retracement level is the most significant. Okay, and this chart 
verifies that. I mean, you can see here, um, as this pullback started to occur, many traders rightfully, including myself, are looking to buy on a dip, right? And so the question always is, is at what price level would it be favorable to buy on a dip? I could buy potentially at this 23.6% retracement level, but I know that that's not that significant. And I know that many other traders are not, also don't find it significant. And so when this chart pulls back to this level, I'm not really ready to buy here because I know this level isn't really well respected. Uh, technically. Now, when the retracement continues and it gets down to this 38.2 level, now my thinking is a little different. I'm more, I think I have a much higher probability uh, buy here. And so I would go ahead and buy here. Uh, and you can see it had a, almost a perfectly clean bounce off of this 38.2 level up higher. So this is a high probability long trade. And mind you, we're only looking at one indicator right now. This is just the Fibonacci retracement indicator. So it tells you how powerful it can be with these levels. Um, and that's to start. Now, if we see a further retracement down at 50% upon a further test, now you're looking at potentially a counter move and you have to kind of give it some more thought. But it just it's first of all, just to give you these values that you can put into your back pocket. And what will this do going back to our first point? using this the right way this will really prevent you from chasing the market it'll prevent you from buying up here buying here you know being too eager or buying way close to the top that's the last thing you want to be doing is chasing the market and i know there are traders who would be buying here and you don't want to be among them you don't want to be in that group uh, and fibonacci will help prevent that tremendously now that's one trending indicator now what i'm going to do is go down to the navigator window which i mentioned at the beginning and I'm gonna open up a couple other trending indicators that I wanna look at along with Fibonacci. So I'm gonna expand the trend folder by left clicking on this on the plus sign again. Okay, now it opens up a few other indicators here. Now you can see there's quite a few and some of these will cover in other tutorials, but I wanna cover the top five. So after Fibonacci, I'd like to look at moving averages. So I'm gonna to go to the moving average folder, left click. Okay, that's gonna bring up this uh, the settings for moving averages. Now, because I'm using a short-term chart pretty much here, a four hour, the period setting is also going to be within a certain range and the 14 period setting is correct for, for this moving average. Now, I'm gonna use the simple moving average because I don't want the, the data overly weighted to the most recent data. I want a balanced, a balanced moving average. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead, I'm okay with the red line. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay to load this moving average. Okay, now we see the moving average loaded onto this four hour euro dollar chart. Now, what's quickly interesting to me from the beginning is that during this entire uptrend, which we also analyzed Fibonacci, for the most part, the price action remained above the moving average. At this one point here where it dipped below, it did not last long, right? Before it quickly and 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 pretty soundly rose above the moving average. What that tells me, heading into the next, heading into the retracement, what this little price action here told me is that this moving average line is fairly well respected on this currency pair and in uh, and on this four hour chart. So if I see during this retracement a breakdown to this, again, combining the Fibonacci with the moving average, my confidence level to buy here, again, at this going back to this 38.2% level, it's even higher now because I know that we've come below the moving average and I don't think that that price, I don't think that that situation will last, okay, based on what I saw here. So I have a combination of reasons now to buy at the 38.2% level. This buy entry here at 38.2 is, 38.2% uh, FIB is looking better and better as I add more indicators uh, to the chart more, it's looking as high probability as really you can possibly get. Now I'm going to add another one, another trending indicator, which is Bollinger Bands. So I'm gonna go back to my navigator window. I'm gonna double click Bo Bollinger Bands. Again, these are the proper settings for a short term chart, 20 periods, two deviations, uh, the green color, sea green, I'm okay with, I'm gonna click okay. And then boom, my Bollinger Bands load on this same chart. Now, what am I taking away from the Bollinger Bands? I'm taking away also how well respected these bands, this two deviation band is particularly during this 
uptrend that I'm that we were initially looking at on the four hour chart. Now, for the most part, the price action is staying within this band. And so once again, for similar reasons to the moving average, when I see this tick below, okay, because you can see here with this lower band during this retracement. Now, this retracement was fairly sharp. Now, during this retracement, we did tick below the Bollinger Band. Now, again, if you're if you're if you're a kind of a mean reversion trader, also somebody who looks at the price action as gravitating back to its most recent uh, average or mean. This also points to a return within the Bollinger Band. So that's what I look at when I look at Bollinger Bands and when I look at moving averages. I look for these little deviations or these breaks from what the price action has normally been doing uh, with the Bollinger Band or with the moving average. And here I see this break below. I don't think that it's sustainable. I don't think that the price action can stay below the band, the bottom band for, for the Bollingers. And so I wait, I wait, I wait to pounce on this 38.2% level. And again, this increases my high probability buy right here. It's a really, really nice entry on this one uh, had we waited. Now, some traders are counter trend traders at times. There's nothing wrong with that necessarily, but you're going to be looking at this the same way, the or a different way, excuse me. The way we're looking at this is as a, a strategy that involves buying the dips on a pullback or a retracement but buying them in a high probability way where we're not chasing the market and where we're not entering too early. And uh, and that's what these indicators will help us do. A combination of Fibonacci retracements, Bollinger Bands, and moving averages on the trending indicators are what's going to keep us honest in our entries and offer us the highest PIP returns we possibly can get. Now, there's a couple, os two oscillating indicators I'd like to add to our three trend indicators. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to the oscillators uh, folder inside the navigator window. I'm gonna expand that a little bit. And now I'm gonna pull up two oscillators that I think are relevant to what I'm looking at here. One is the relative strength index or RSI for short. So I'm gonna double click relative strength index. It's gonna load the proper settings. Again, 14 for the short term chart, blue color, click okay. Now my RSI is on the chart. I'm gonna add one more while we're in this navigator window, which is MACD, which stands for Moving Average Convergence Divergence. I'm gonna double click. Okay, I have my, my EMA settings, which these are the standard settings for MACD, uh, which you should always be using 12, 26, and nine. Okay, I'm gonna click okay. Now I have two oscillating indicators on the chart here at the bottom which I can use in combination with what I have above. Now, quite frankly, I think what we have with these, with the with the Fibonacci, the moving averages and the Bollinger Bands is fairly convincing in and of itself. But why would I, why might I also look at this? Well, what's helpful to know is the conditions around the, or the market conditions or the market environment that you're trading in. Is Euro dollar right now at this time where I'm considering buying on a dip, is, are there any unique conditions that I want to be aware of for this currency pair? Meaning, is the pair oversold or overbought? You know, you might have heard these terms before. Uh, to tell that, RSI is helpful at first because you can see RSI has two levels that you want to pay attention to. The 30 level here on this oscillator and the 70 level. If the oscillator reaches 30 or below, the, the currency pair is considered to be oversold. If it reaches 70 or above, it's considered to be overbought, okay? Now, we can see during this price action what we're talking about here, uh, pair is not really quite oversold. So there's nothing really too convincing to add to what we have above from the RSI, but there are certain, and this is where I think I mentioned counter trend trading. For counter trend traders, so traders who will like to trade swings, you know, so even within an uptrend, they're looking to try to fade or sell um, a counter trend move. RSI can be quite helpful because you can see here in these two occasions where we got above the 70 level, or most recently right here, this was a predictor because the RSI started to fall here. You can see this dip in RSI, and that corresponds to this level here in Euro dollar and Euro dollar was continuing to rise. So you had a dip in the RSI or a, a mover downward in the RSI and the 
but the price action was going higher. This is what we call divergence, okay? It's similar to what we're gonna see when we look at MACD in a second, but that's kind of a tip off that the price action in Euro dollar is not, it, it, there will be a, a retracement coming soon, or you should be aware of a retracement covering soon if you see a divergence. And so these overbought and oversold levels can be helpful, particularly to a counter trend trader who's looking to trade really both with the trend sometimes and against the trend sometimes, and the RSI will help them achieve that, achieve capturing as many swings as possible. MACD is similar, okay? So MACD, you have the uh, the signal line, the dotted red line, and then you have the MACD price action uh, in, in white. And so basically you're looking for crossovers from the white line over or uh, coming up under and over, or the opposite basically between the white lines and the red lines. And similar to RSI, if you see the white line crossing over the red line, okay, but in the price action you see the, op in the price action on the chart above, you see the opposite, that's also divergence, okay? That's also a form of divergence. And so it's, it's represented slightly differently than RSI. Some people like RSI better because it's a little more clear cut with the 30 and the 70 levels. Uh, I like both. I mean, the and, and when you see divergence in both the RSI and the MACD, the combination is extremely powerful. And again, I think it's more of a tool for a counter trend trader uh, than for a trend trader. But what we've covered today with these five indicators is we've saw we, we've observed how to take an opportunity with trending indicators combining Fibonacci, uh, moving averages, and Bollinger bands to time our buying on a dip properly and make sure that it's as high probability as we can. And we, we covered this 38.2% level. With RSI and MACD, we looked at a counter trend opportunity to sell uh, an uptrend at the right time. And we saw how that can be used during when we identify overbought conditions and divergence. So with this combination of indicators, you really can do a lot. We looked at Euro dollar today, but it's applicable to all other currency pairs that you might be looking to trade. And so what we're gonna do now is wrap up today's tutorial. Uh, what I would really encourage everyone to do is follow uh, us on the Forex Boat YouTube channel. There's so much great content on there that you can access all of the time. So with that, we're gonna conclude today's tutorials on the best indicators. I hope it's been helpful and we look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Take care.